How good is Claude at writing rock code? So we actually have something uh, at rocklang.org um, in the docs section on the built-ins. We have a little, um, it's like, this is for LLMs basically. And it's a little like markdown document that you can just like either copy paste in the LLM or just like put in your, you know, dot rules file or whatever. Okay. That's basically like, Hey, here's what this language is all about. <laughs> and it's really? just sort of like a little, yeah, it's a little primer for like a large That's language. Cool. Model. Does that work pretty well? Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's hard to say because there aren't really any like big rock code bases so far, but like definitely, um, if you give it like enough examples like that, I've actually like, even without using that thing, I've had it, um, I've had good experiences with being like, I've opened a dot rock file and I'm like, Hey, look at this thing. Can you like write some new function like in that style? And yeah, I mean, um, the, the funniest thing that I've seen it do though, is like sometimes because rock is like really not super represented as a training set surprise when there's something that it has not seen any examples of, it'll just make something up. And quite often it will guess like something from like Elm or like Haskell or like some other functional language. Cause like, it's just like, this feels kind of like a functional thing. So like right. maybe it's this and it'll just kind of throw it in there. And then usually when that happens, I kind of chuckle and I'm like, no, no, it's actually this in rock. Mm -hmm. um, so it's obviously not going to be as good as like, you know, languages that are like really heavily in this trading set. I actually view that as kind of like similar to the ecosystem thing where like historically, whenever you make a new programming language, people would always say like, well, no one will ever use this because it doesn't have the ecosystem of, you know, gigantically popular language, you know, a it's like, yeah, okay. But new languages do come up and exist. And like, you know, they weren't there before. And then like, you, like rust, for example, people would have said like, oh, nobody used rust because it doesn't have the C plus plus ecosystem. It's like, yeah, but then like that happens over time. And it's the same thing with large language models. It's like, no one will use this because it's not in the training set. It's like, okay, I know. Like that's a downside at first. You have to like, when you're an early adopter, you're going to have to like deal with occasionally it hallucinates some Haskell in there. <laughs> um, but in the same way that like the ecosystem is small at first, but over time it grows and then that stops being a downside once you get a certain amount of adoption. And right. the trade-off is like as an early adopter, you get to be a lot more of a like, voice and participate like a, a more prominent contributor to the community um you know because you got in early when it was you know not the most polished <laughs> right i was speaking with mads torgerson recently he's the mm. lead designer on c sharp and we were kind of lamenting that it's probably never been harder to to break out though as a new programming language than it is now because of these tools and the selection bias bias kind of like the the rich stay richer effect of an llm either choosing a tool or a language because you don't care if you're vibing it or just not being as ergonomical or as useful to you. And so maybe you just pick Python because it knows it better. Whereas you're kind of interested in rock, but you're like, yeah, I'm not going to get much help here. I feel like it's going to be harder and harder to actually break out in so the next few years. What do you think? I thought that my opinion on that has actually completely 180 since I actually tried it. Well, so let's hear it. Yeah. the experience that I had was, like intuitively that makes sense. Right. Um, mm -hmm. but so the experience I had is like, we, as I mentioned earlier, we did recently, well, recently as like several months ago, decide to rewrite the compiler in zig. I had done some zig, but I, I really not used it like super in anger for like a, a, like a big code base before. So there was a lot of like learning that I had to do. What I found was that a zig, even though it's like a pretty niche language today is plenty well represented in like Claude's data set that like, you can just kind of jam on it. It doesn't really hallucinate you know, I, I have not seen any problems with like Claude four, um, like having problems with that. Uh, but what's really great about it is that I know from plenty of years of experience of trying out new languages that there is always a ramp up period when you're trying a new language. That's always been a really significant downside, which is like, I don't know what character to type next. I know what I want it to do, but I don't know how to say that in this language. Mm -hmm. And when I hit that roadblock, I always have to go find documentation, but maybe there's like, it's like a weird symbol. And so I don't, I can't like Google for it effectively. And I'm like, Oh, what part of the tutorial is going to talk about this thing? Or like, I know conceptually what I want to do, but I don't exactly know even like what to search for. I'm just like, here's, I have this like thing that I want to do. And I know the language can do it. I just don't know how to do it. That problem is gone in the mm. large language model world because I just tell the large language model, Hey, I want to do this thing. I don't know how to do it in Zig. And it's like, here you go. I just wrote it for you in Zig. And I look at it and I'm like, I can guess what this code does. Like I, it's, it looks like it does what I want. And mm -hmm. if I want, I can now, now I know exactly what this code is. I can go look up the docs if I'm uh, concerned about that, but it, it feels so much less choppy and like stumbling around in the darky to like get ramped up on a language compared to the old days when like we didn't have access to these tools, like the new user experience, if it's, you know, sufficiently represented in the data set, but even if it's not like you, like I said, you know, you, you can, you can help the model out with this thing. Um, it feels so much easier to get into it. And, 
The other big downside that I mentioned, like the historical thing that everyone always talked about was ecosystem. You know what tool is really, really good at taking an existing library and porting it to a new language and like taking out like 95% of the time consuming drudgery of that. So you could just kind of like review it, <laughs> like, you know, large language models. Like if you want to get like your favorite, you know, hashing function in rock, for example, like that's something that like porting that from, you know, whatever language a to like to mm -hmm. rock by hand, really, really painstaking and error prone and like annoying. Now I can just be like, Hey, okay, Claude, you know, port over all the tests first. I want to make sure all the tests are in place and I'll hand review the test to make sure like, okay, these are doing the same things as the other tests in that repo. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Now start porting over the implementation. Oh, tests failed. Great. Go fix them. Like here's, you have all the source code on both sides. The amount of time that it should take to bootstrap an ecosystem and like get it to a point where it's not going to be as big as, you know, like big longstanding ecosystems, but getting it to a point where ecosystem is not really a blocker for people and they can kind of like get into the, the language and like reach for hashing or, or whatever, you know, bug snag off the shelf, yeah. um, I think should be a lot faster. So putting those things together, I'm like, I actually think it might be easier than ever to, for like a new language to break out, especially because if you're like, I'm in this big code base that I have and I want to start using a new language, it's like easier than ever to start writing code in that language, like from a, you know, with the help of a large language model. Um, and if I'm just going to be mostly writing in English anyway, to synthesize the new code, like why don't I have it synthesize code? That's like easier to read and to review. And mm -hmm. you know, that like has nicer properties to be like, Oh, this is a pure function. So I don't have to go like worry about what the implications are. Like that's, there's a lot of advantages to reviewing code that you get from searching languages. But if you're just telling the model what code to write in the first place, like, you know, why would I tell it to generate Python when I could tell it to generate rock, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> gotcha. That's interesting. Yeah. I can definitely see that.